Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello. So this week I want to talk to you about emotions, but specifically I want to give you a tool to help you to navigate particularly emotionally charged situations. Before I go into anything, I want to just give you a little bit of context about emotions and what how I see emotions fitting into what it makes us as humans. It's just going to be a very short synopsis to, in today's episode because <laughs> my episodes aren't particularly long. They're meant to be little sound bites. Um, if you want to know more about what I'm going to share with you today, I've got a course on how to make the most of being human, where I dive into the subconscious and the conscious and how the two sort of operate and how they affect who we are and how we show up in the world, um, which you'll find a link to in the show notes below. But just for the purpose of today's episode, I'm just going to give you a brief summing up of some of the, some of the points that relate to specifically to emotions and how they work in our operation as a human being. So the way I see it is that we have um, two aspects. Well, there's many aspects, but for the point of this, there's two aspects. We have our subconscious aspect when we're being operated by our subconscious and we have our conscious self. Now, our subconscious is the part that runs us 99% of the time. And our conscious self is the part that aligns us with the truth of who we are. And my whole purpose in life is to help people shift from being operated by their subconscious into starting to operate themselves in a much more conscious way in life. Now, when you look at the subconscious, the way the subconscious, the whole purpose of the subconscious is to ensure our survival. And it does this in a number of ways. One of the ways is to make sure that we act in a way that ensures that we get more of what we do want and less of what we don't want. And one of the ways that it, or the data that it uses is around the emotions that we feel. And the very word emotion means to emote, to create movement, to create motion. And the way that I see it, it's a two-way thing. So your subconscious holds all of your memories, all of your experiences, everything you've ever experienced in your entire life. And from all this data that it's collected, it sifts through what it thinks is likely to promote your survival in life, the things that are pleasant and um, are likely to ensure that you thrive in the world and the things that cause you stress or anger or upset and the things that are likely to cause you harm and hinder your survival in, the, in life. So it initially takes in information for how you react to things in your environment. But once it has that information, it then can also create emotions to cause you to act in a certain way to prevent a situation that might cause you harm or to help you gain a situation that causes you pleasure. Summing all of that up, emotions are there to give you feedback. They're feedback mechanisms for your environment. They're not something that is ever static, and anyone who's ever chased happiness will know that it's an elusive thing. And emotions by their very nature are elusive. They come and they go. They're, they're simply there to help us form an opinion of something that's going on in life. If you stand in, in front of a beautiful sunrise or sunset or a rainbow or a vista um, and you're particularly moved by it, it's feedback that it's something that is positive in your life. If you meet somebody and you have an argument with them and you feel upset, angry, hurt, um, pain or whatever else, it's feedback from your environment that that situation is not conducive to you having um, a happy, fulfilled, thriving life. Unfortunately, when we're not aware that emotions are just feedback from our environment, we buy into them and we live our life trying to chase emotions, trying to make ourselves happy through controlling our environment. And we give our emotions much more power over us than they actually are meant to have. And in this video, as I said, I'm going to give you a tool to help you manage these emotions. And it's a really simple tool, but it's an incredibly effective tool. And it's one that I share with all of my clients at some point in my coaching or in my courses with them. And it's very simple. It's a pause. So whenever you feel an overwhelming emotion, either giddy excitement and crazy excitement and high, or deep depression, sadness, anger, whatever else, before you react, 
and take action, which is what the subconscious is trying to get you to do, it's always a really good idea to learn to pause. Because in that moment of pausing, you create space. Space to think consciously, to choose what is in your best interests, rather than having your subconscious run you by causing you to react in the moment um, and create a situation that might not necessarily be to your highest good. And I say for your highest good, because when the subconscious is running you, it's run by old beliefs, old patterns, old fears, old hurts, old wounds, and all of these things, and they create loops in your life. Um, they're called fear loops or sort of behavioral loops. And when you're motivated by fear, you actually create the very thing that you fear. And I've seen this in dogs as well as humans. Um, I once had a very skittish dog and I used to walk, well, I used to go running with both her and my other dog. And the more jittery and skittery she was, the more it would irritate my more sedate, more calm dog. And the more likely that dog was to snap, get irritated, push her, shove her, which would then create even more skittishness, which would then create even more annoyance. And I mean, that's an, in its simplest form with dogs, but the same is very true of us as humans. So when we react from our emotions and they come from fear or something like that, we create the very thing that we are trying to avoid. But when you use that pause thing, and it takes time, once, I, once I've shared it with you, it's not like you're gonna suddenly go out and pause the next time you have an uh, intense emotion, but you might then remember what I've said and that will plant a seed. And eventually, after reminding yourself every time you react, you'll start to sort of try to make, sure, make, sure, make yourself pause. And eventually you'll get it right. And in that moment, in that pausing before you react, you can then choose. Choose what do I want to do? What do I need to do? How do I need to express myself to create the situation that I actually want and that I actually intend? When you have that space, you can ask yourself, how does this emotion serve me? What is this emotion trying to tell me? When you've acknowledged what you're meant to be gaining from that emotion, you can let the emotion go. And there is no need to then respond or react in that emotion. So if something's happened and it's made you angry, normally the reaction would be to come from that space of anger and shout and scream and get really upset with the person we're with or retreat and become defensive or whatever it is that is your mechanism. But in that, you're not actually creating what you really want. If, however, you're able to acknowledge the emotion, let it go, and in that pause space that I've spoken about, decide what you really want to create out of the emotion, out of, the spe out of what it is, the situation, then you can choose to speak, act, whatever it is you want to do, from a space of choice and conscious creation, rather than reaction to your subconscious programming. There's quite a lot in that and I'm just going to sum it up very briefly. So the first step when you feel an intense emotion is to pause. The next step is to acknowledge the emotion and what it is trying to share with you. And the third step is to decide what you really want to get out of the situation that you're in and what you really want to create um, that benefits you in your future and not just in that heated moment that you're experiencing. I hope you've enjoyed today's session. Anything I've spoken about or any links will be in the show notes below, along with my website and my social media, should you want to connect with me. I offer free chemistry calls for my coaching and you're welcome to book an appointment with me through any of my social media or through my website. And I've also got online courses that will be, um, links to that will be on my website as well. Hope you have a fabulous week. So much love from me to you. Bye-bye.